Okay, Tuesday, 18th of June, 2024. So, politically diversify your life. Having a politically diversified life. So, a lot of people in life, in life will talk about having a diversified portfolio. Different incomes, and different businesses and assets to invest in. Diversify, diversify, diversify. Hedge your bets and be protected against whatever else and just go here, go there and diversify. Fine, logical, you know, you're an adult, fair enough. Now, we expand that logic, diversification, into other realms of our life. Passports, for example. Political affiliation, not, not in a sense of political party or voting, but in a sense of um, where you are, who you're obliged to pay to or well, do a tribute to, you could say, you know, for taxes or whatever else. Or how international you are, because this is a kind of continuation of yesterday's vlog as well, where having a politically diversified life is an interesting idea and might be worth considering and thinking about. It, or thinking about. But what does it mean? Having multiple passports so you don't owe allegiance to one particular group, state, but you have other other alliance, uh, not alliances, other um, passports, so you're more diversified. So if you're not being treated well over here, you can always go over there or over there, but also because you've got passports in those places, you'll have fewer rules and regulations to immigration rules and permanent residency, whatever else, because you did that years ago or whatever else, because you've got the passport, you can just... Go from one system, it's very modular, go from here, go over there, or elsewhere. Going where you treated best, that's the principle. Powerful, powerful principle. Go where you treated best. I'm not happy here, where can I get a better deal? Oh, over there. Oh, I, happen to have, to, I have a passport there as well. Because, you've done the research, you've been there before, so I'm going to go over there. Now, it seems also in life that some passports are more worthwhile than others. Some countries are more worthwhile than others. It's subjective. It's life. I have different priorities, values, standards, you name it, compared to you. Or the person over there, or the person over there. Fair enough. We want to go where you treated best, and only you, and I, by definition, would know where that would be. So it seems, then, we want to be diversified, so we can always, in a, at a moment's notice, for example, go somewhere else to be treated better. Hmm. Very fair, very logical, very just, very understandable, very reasonable. Makes sense. So then it's a question of where. Where would you want to go? Where would you want to diversify to? And that is a rabbit hole of a question. There's no right or wrong answer to that. And the answer itself is infinite. It, by what metric, by what standard are you judging different places to diversify into? Different cultures. Different cultures, countries, economies, infrastructure, postal systems, attitudes, foods, cuisine, weather, climate, altitudes, you name it countless things how many factors are important that help you determine where you want to live the price of things inflation the currency exchange rate the banking system you name it hmm. this place that place has potential here there i like the language of here that's a so good that's too far this is too cheap this is too hot you name it powerful stuff and then that kind of means then it's worthwhile in life traveling going to these places because you see to have a diversified life we want to think carefully carefully where to go and doing research online youtube videos chat gpt vlogs you name it goes only oh so far eventually you have to pull the trigger and go there travel there do it and then the question of how long and when and logistics it's all logistics all decisions it's a good problem to have because you could say well was it worthwhile going in january or july or maybe december well it's both for choice logistics fine that's life but eventually, you've got to go there and find out for yourself. Because I've also come to realise in life that what you see over here on, say, a bulletin or the news or in general here might not be the reality on the ground. So likewise, you might say, well, this country has a good passport, but, oh, it's, 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 it's really bad in some way. Insert excuse or insert problem here. Fair enough. I understand. We're adults. I, can, I understand. Let's go there. Is it going to stop me? No. Is fear going to stop me? No. Go there, find out for yourself. Because the reality isn't always in sync, so to speak, with the, the perception, the stereotype. But there are stereotypes for a reason. But there'll be nuances, variations by going there. Case in point, in 2020, during a certain situation we had back then, there was a certain rule I remember reading online on a certain website 
in a certain country that something specific will happen if certain stuff happen in public, whatever, related to the situation. Okay, right, okay, interesting. Went there, nothing of the sort happened. Nothing of the sort happened. Okay, fair enough. Now, another website made this interesting claim that uh, in another country, people, people are stealing manhole covers, sewer covers on the street, leaving holes, random holes in the street. Ooh, doesn't, doesn't sound very organized. Okay, that's quite a claim. I have to, I have to see for myself. I have to go and see for myself. By seeing for yourself, then, you can decide with greater accuracy if you want to diversify into that country. Because it's all fine and dandy to, dandy to read things online, go here, go there, passport here, passport there, but you've got to go there in the end and find out for yourself. Another, another example, when I went to Mexico, I, I watched a load of videos and this and travel vlogs, whatever else, and then when I was there, I realised one or two things that they didn't really talk about in these vlogs for my own subjective personal opinion, was that ultimately everything's got a price tag here. Everyone wants a tip. Some guy, I remember us in a hotel, offered me a beer, okay, this is after two weeks being there, a week and a half. How much? Oh, just my tip, sir. Gave him a couple of uh, pesos, he was happy, I was happy. And then a week or so later, I was reversing into a car park and this guy with a little flag was waving, guiding me in. And I thought, ah, oh, that's very nice of him. And then people told me, oh, you should have tipped him. I'm thinking, well, I didn't think that. I just thought it was a nice gesture. Of course, it makes sense. In that case, it's a service. In the beer, it's a product. Yeah, they want a tip. Everything's for sale. Hmm. Everything's got a price tag. Fair enough. Fair enough. And it's those specific things in life that you can't really learn through the videos or the articles. Now, maybe if you watch a million videos and read a million articles, yeah, you might eventually stumble upon it. But by going there, you learn for yourself, and then you learn to a greater degree of accuracy whether or not you want to diversify into this place or that place. Why? Because it's field research. You can do all the theory you want online, but on, eventually you have to be on the ground and find out for yourself. Very reasonable, very rational. Worst case, it's an adventure, it's a holiday. You go there, you spend a month to get to know the place. Worst case, you have a damn good time. You learn something, you see something, you take nice, take nice pictures, take nice videos, go to nice places, things happen, you travel, whatever else, you had a good time. Perfect. So ultimately then, you can't lose. Because you either go to the place and you like it and diversify into it, be more international. You go there, you don't like it, and now you know, right, that place had potential, but no. My experience is abroad, I know more things about the world, and I know that place, for definite, is not for me not to diversify into. Hmm. Clarity. As I said before on this channel a few times, clarity. Which of these places should I go to? Well, I've been there. I know what it's like, and I didn't like it. Fair enough. Okay, now there's all these other ones to look into. And based on your experiences from there, you can now reason and rationalise better with the rest of them, and have a much more, a better estimation of what the reality could be on the ground in those places. I.e., you become better, you become wiser and smarter. So you can't lose. Powerful. There's a nice saying, actually. People say you either win, oh, you win, or, win or you lose. You either win or you lose. Then I remember hearing someone flipped it around and said you either win or learn. True. Powerful. So, yeah, getting multiple passports, but which country? Hmm. That's the nice problem to have. Because ultimately, it's an excuse to travel and go to places. And you just you just grow as a, as a person, as an individual, by the controlled stress of these places and you see more of the world and that's really cool mm. yeah but otherwise you will see me tomorrow